Hello everybody, so welcome to Brooklyn Live. And no, Nick did not shave his head and get a New York <laughs> accent. My name is Derek Anthony. I'm the owner of D. Anthony Salon in Nyack. I'm an ambassador salon owner, and I'll talk to you about the ambassador program and what that's done for me in my salon over the course of my haircut today. But I'm super, super happy to be here and excited that Nick asked me to um, take care of Brooklyn Live today. So Nick is traveling today as he does many, many days and many weeks throughout the year. So honored that he was able to give me the responsibility of handling this. And I'm really excited to teach you guys today some really fun razor cutting. I'm going to be doing a really fun cut that I've already started on my beautiful model, model Arlen. And I'll catch you up on what I started with already. And then we'll continue from there. But I also have a couple team members um, from my team, an apprentice that just graduated on the salon floor named Carly, and someone that's right in the training program named David, that I'm going to have them talk a little bit about it too. So for you salon owners that are maybe joining in now, um, I'm going to talk about my training program and how I've been able to imp implement that into my salon and make it a key component into the culture of my salon and how it's modeled very similar and after what Nick has done with the Rojo. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about to stylists, for those of you that are maybe looking for a salon to be a part of, or looking to be a part of something that's a training program, how you can find something that's right for you, or really start to, to educate yourself. That's a great way to start. So, this is my beautiful model, model Arlen, like I said. The haircut that we're going to be doing today is called the Shatterbox, one of my favorite trend haircuts. A Rojo subscription is something that I live on. I use it all the time. So for $30 a month, you have access to a ton of videos, anything that you want, from classic scissors to advanced razor to classic razor and everything in between. Men's haircutting, color, all of that. So this is in one of the trends section of the subscription. It's a shatter box. It's called the shatter box. Nick does, Nick does this haircut on a longer haired model, a little bit longer than Arlen. So what I've done is I went in and I just point cut through her ends just to clean it up and keep it really clean. And just for time's sake, I already did that. Um, what's really cool about this haircut is it creates an, an internal asymmetry, or as Nick would say, it's asymmetry. Um, and it has more of a weight through one side, um, but it's not like the length is longer than one, on one side than the other. It just has this kind of different shape and feel because of the way that you approach it and because of the over direction that you use throughout the technique. So let's get started, because you know, if anybody that knows me knows I can talk a lot, so I want to get going and actually start cutting from here. So what I'm going to show you real quick is Arlen's before picture. You guys see that? Okay, so just really classic, long hair. She was pretty much one length, has an old grown out bang um, that we're gonna actually be working a full bang onto Arlen's face. It's gonna look amazing on her. She has a beautiful face shape, um, really incredible hair, so this is gonna look perfect on her. So right now, I'm really just focusing on the internal portion of the haircut. We'll worry about the exterior when we get to that point. So for younger hair cutters or some, uh, for those of you that are first starting, for me, I remember one of the biggest things was I just got caught up on the little details along the way that are, that are really your finishing points that you should focus on after during your refinement. So focus on getting your shape into the cut first, and then you can work out all the refinement after. Okay, so what I did was I sectioned Arlen's hair away from the ear back on both sides. So you can see that the whole back is just sectioned away, really simple. We're working off of an off-center part on her left-hand side and everything's gonna be over-directed up and over toward me through this um, pivot point, okay? So this point here becomes a pivot point for the whole entire haircut, and especially for the very front. So what I did was, my first section came from that point straight down, just like this. Let me put my razor down for a moment. And I cut this, what we call short to long, starting from here, working my way all the way out to the length. And what I did was I took those sections from the pivot point and I cartwheeled all the way down and all the way across the whole entire section, all the way through. So my final section, where I just stopped, is as I'm starting to cross over into the opposite side of the head. Okay, so that pivot point needs to stay intact. You need to keep your eye on that the whole time to know where you're coming from. What you don't want to do is start moving your section forward. You want everything to cartwheel and pinwheel off of that point. So you'll see, as I work, I'm going to go here, 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 and all the way through and down through this whole side, and everything's going to come up and over toward me. And as I'm working, if you guys have any kind of questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We have the gorgeous and amazing Corinne behind the camera today. Corinne and I have a cool story together because we both started coming to Happy Mondays around the same time about five years ago now? 
Uh, probably six. Maybe six. six. <laughs> so um, it, it's really incredible where she is in the brand and um, you know, I've been able to start kind of making my way through as well and that's really fun to be here with her today. So just going to cross back over what I've already cut just to take a look at it. This needs to, as you see, I need to tilt my model's head over and I need to have elevation up and toward my chest so that this way I don't create too much weight and I create softness through the shape. So I'm gonna just look at it, I've already, you can see through the very last two inches, I've already started to tip out some of that weight. And that's something that, you, that you're that you gonna probably wanna do through a few of your sections where you see maybe the density of the hair and where you wanna manipulate that density and create a little bit more softness. The idea of this haircut, as Nick says in the video, is to have the layers crash together and to create a kind of perfectly imperfect shape and look. So you can already see what this is starting to create. I haven't created any face frame or anything like that. I haven't worried about any of that. But you can see the swing and the movement that's starting to happen through this side. Um, and it's gonna just continue all the way over. So let's take our first section from the pivot point. We're gonna come down and through. I'm gonna section this away. And I'm gonna use clips just to stay really clean. Three years ago, I, um, well, let me back that up for a second. Five years ago, I decided to open up a salon. And I was working with a Rojo product from a different salon at the time, so I was already familiar with the Rojo just through the product. And it was something that I really liked and really enjoyed using. And when I started to open up my own salon, or started to think about opening up my own salon, I started to think about you know, what products I wanted to carry. So naturally, I kind of gravitated toward a Rojo, but little did I know that the product, as amazing as it is, became almost the least focal point of my relationship with Rojo. The education is what sucked me in. And I realized that I could become a better hair cutter and I could become a better owner and leader um, by learning through what Nick was teaching. And um, that's what really attracted me. I, I did not cut with the razor for 10 straight years. I was a scissor only hair cutter. I thought razors were bad. I thought that they destroyed the hair. Um, but, you know, I was ignorant to that education because I hadn't learned. And when I started to learn what um, the razor could actually do and create, I started to fall in love with it. And I started to fall in love with the looks that it created. And all that loose swing and, uh, you know, just the difference that it could create and the point of difference that I could create for myself in my own market. And um, that's when razoring for me really started to kind of take a turn. So I'm going to spray this with a little bit of Hydro Mist. absolutely love this product. It's a really great lightweight conditioning spray. Think of it as like a hydrating water. Um, so this way it doesn't weigh the hair down as I cut it, but I want to make sure that the hair is evenly damp all the way through so that we're not tearing at the hair. We want to raise it always evenly damp. That's really important. So again, same pivot point. Now my section is going to slope down the head a bit more all the way through here. And I'm going to continue in that fashion all the way until I run out of hair through here. I'm going to clip this away. Again, staying clean is really important. I attended boot camp three years ago. I had gone to almost every class that I possibly could at a Rojo already. And I remember one time after Happy Mondays, I asked Nick, you know, what could I really do to, you know, what do you recommend I could do to really push forward my skill set? And his answer was boot camp. So I made the commitment. This was three years ago. Uh, what I did was, it was January, of three years ago, and I blocked out my schedule for the following August, or for that August. And I was able to promote this to my clients and get myself excited about it, my team excited about it, and also my clients excited about the fact that I was gonna go on this really cool journey for a whole month in the city at a Rojo. Most people know who Nick Rojo is, clients know who Nick is, obviously from TV and what not to wear and all that, so that became a really cool um, promotional tool for me. And I could get them excited about me getting better, you know, because I was really getting better for them. But most importantly, I needed them to know that I was getting better for me. You know, that I wanted to be a better hair cutter. I wanted to be a better hairdresser. I wanted to be more of a craftsman and understand what I was doing, how I was doing it, why I was doing it, what I was creating and why I was creating it. Um, and that was something that I feel, I think early on in my career, I was very frustrated with. Because sometimes you hit a, a snag or a pitfall or a challenge in a haircut, and your experience and knowledge is what helps you get out, but if you don't have the experience of the education, then you don't know how to get your way out, and sometimes you end up just frustrated. Um, and that's kind of how I felt. So I knew that I needed to like push myself outside of my comfort zone 
in order to get better. And that's what I encourage you guys a lot to do. Um, I was just talking to the cosmetology students at Arojo um, a day or so ago, or actually on Monday. And that's what I was talking about. I, I just, I've done this whole self-analysis of myself and I realized that that's where I was. You know, I was just stuck in my comfort zone. And, you know, comfort zones are great places and very dangerous places all at the same time. Because they're great because you feel comfortable in them and that's where you're, you're the most comfortable, obviously. But that's not where you grow. You know, you grow when you push yourself up and outside of your comfort zone. So never would I have thought three years ago that I'd be talking to Facebook today doing a, a live haircut out of Nick's Brooklyn location that didn't exist three years ago. So I think that's just a testament to just working really hard, you know, being really consistent with um, your work ethic and um, being really disciplined and just kind of stay the course. So getting back to my cut, what I'm doing is now keeping a very open blade. I want to keep my texture very consistent through the whole shape. And you can obviously see that all of this hair is being up pulled up and over to a very extreme over direction, which is going to let it fall a little bit heavier and longer through the opposite side. What that's going to do is give Arlen a bit of an edgier, long layered feel, as opposed to doing a classic long layer. Doing a classic long layer is great too, I do that a lot when I'm going for that, but Arlen has a little bit more of a cool edge to her. She's um, actually from my town, Nyack. Big shout out to anybody from Rockland County, Nyack, in the house. And, um, you know, Arlen has this really beautiful face, beautiful look, and um, she's not afraid to have a, a trend kind of a haircut. We've done everything on Arlen from like bobs to long hair to bangs to, and everything in between. So she's always a lot of fun. And uh, I thought, I said, wait a minute, I think Arlen moved to Brooklyn. I'm going to call her and see if she's available. So. I got my own model here today too as well, so no excuses for anybody that can't get models when you're in a training program. You can always get a model. Okay, so almost finishing up this side here. Have just a couple more seconds, still coming from that same pivot point, working my way down. Probably have about two or three sections left and then we're going to move on. So pulling this all the way up and over. What's really important now is to maintain my elevation, make sure I don't get too heavy, and to again stay really consistent with my stroke. What's left in my hand is what's left on the hair. So what that means, it's like a puzzle piece. So I can see exactly the amount of texture I'm creating and the, the huge ability of, of this kind of a razor as opposed to um, you know, a guarded razor is just that, it's unguarded. So what that means is you have more control. It also means you need to know what you're doing because you have a lot of control. Um, and obviously a, one blade touching on the hair can create a lot of different things and you need to you know just educate yourself on it so how do I educate myself on it I've already talked about boot camp I've talked about all the classes that I've taken but then you know what it was too it was going home and doing it on a client every single day and picking it up every single day and I took it home with me during boot camp and I took the blade out and I just practiced my stroke and I'd sit while I watched TV and do this and figure out how to lock and load it, and figure out the stroke of it, and what open felt like, what flat on the blade felt like, what against the edge felt like, and just started to, you know, just familiarize myself with the tool. Um, and as I said, I live on a Rojo subscription. It's something that I use At all the, the time. I'm uh, um, <laughs> on the treadmill. <laughs> was that? Is it at the gym? At the gym. I was just you just the words out of my mouth. Always, you know. For those that know me know I live in the gym. I love the gym. It's uh, like, kind of like my uh, my coffee in the morning. Um, and what's great about um, when you do cardio, you can listen. You can listen to music, which I love to do too. Big hip hop fan. That new Tribe Called Quest album I love. <laughs> me and Nick were listening to that in my car the other day. He was loving it too. But um, you know what it's about is you just drop this in the bar real quick. What it's about is you have to just spray this. You know, what it's really about, honestly, is you gotta push yourself, and you gotta grow yourself. So what I was doing was, I said, you know what, when I'm in the gym in the mornings, if I'm on the treadmill, how could I kill two birds in one stone? Well, I could turn on a video, and I could watch it while I run. And it's really motivating that way as well. So I, start, I got very familiar with it. So for instance, for this week, this whole entire week, every single morning, I watch the Shadowbox video to, feel, to get more familiar with it. And then on Tuesday, after the training session with my team, I cut a mannequin. 
from um, one length to a shadow box. Um, and I talked to Arlen about it via text on Facebook. And uh, we talked about you know, what she wanted. She wanted to keep the length. She wants a bang. And she wants some movement. So perfect. It's exactly what I want to create today with her hair. So as you can see, I'm kind of rounding the corner here. I'm almost done with the whole front. What I'm doing now is using tipping. Tipping is you're taking the very tip of your blade and you're gliding it along the surface of the hair to create a little bit more looseness in the density of the hair. And you're really manipulating the texture of the hair to be a bit less bulky and less thick. Arlen has a lot of hair and that's what's gonna lend itself so well to this haircut because you're gonna see she's gonna have this really wearable, soft, really sexy shape. Um, but it's not gonna look over the top editorial. We're not going like runway where she's gonna have like any kind of a mullet feel or anything like that. Um, long lip mullet. But it's gonna have a bit different of a feel, like I said, because of the approach. So just tipping through a little bit more. And of course, if you guys have any questions out there, mm -hmm, please don't one. hesitate to ask. Uh, Derek, we have uh, Francisco is asking, I'm going to try the razor method, but some clients don't like it. What's the advantage and what is the best way to convert them to the razor? Great question. Um, so like I was saying before, great question, Francisco. Um, what I was saying before is I had spent 10 years telling clients how terrible razors were. And now here I am coming at them with a razor. <laughs> So I had to readjust my world, and I had to know that there was going to be an education process, and I had to be honest about it. So now, you don't want to spend time convincing anybody. So it's not like if someone sits in my chair and I pick up my razor and they say, oh no, I really hate razors, I had a terrible experience, I don't want you to cut with a razor. No problem, I put my razor down and I pick up a scissor. Because the most important thing is to build a relationship with the client, and building a relationship involves building trust. So the first time I cut someone's hair, it's like, it's our first date. So I'm not gonna like go in for the kiss right away. You gotta wait, you know? So you wanna build some trust and maybe eventually talk to them about what the razor can do depending on what they're going for. If their look has that swing and looseness to it and softness and you can obviously see the photo they're showing you looks like it's been razored, then that's what you can explain to them. And then what I would do is introduce the razor just at the bang area. Maybe just as the face frame, just to add some softness. And then they like that, and then it becomes a bit addicting, because you're like, wow, I really love the way that looked or fell or grew in. So now they want to use it a bit more. Okay, so let's take a look at this shape now that we've created. You can see she has a lot of movement happening, all this shortness through here. And when this pushes back over the other way, she's going to have a little bit more length that falls through the other side. You can see that layering that falls over and kind of cascades over here. We haven't focused on any kind of the face framing or any kind of shape like that yet. So now we're gonna just continue to start to blend the back in. Okay, so I'm gonna take these two clips out that I, that I had clipped away, that's the whole back section. And now we're gonna take that same point that we started at, that pivot point, and we're going to do classic long layer sections from that pivot point. So what that's gonna look like is pie section from here, working my way down, all the way through from that pivot point, all the way until I reach center back. And I'm gonna do the same thing from the other side. So we're gonna bring this up and over to connect into what we were just cutting. So I'm gonna take a point right from there, a section right from my pivot point, come straight down. I'm gonna push this hair away. And again, I'm gonna clip it away just to stay clean. Whether you're using clips or not, it's really important. That's one of the biggest things. People ask me sometimes, I get this question a lot, when I went to boot camp, what was one of the biggest things that changed for me? And to be honest with you, my sectioning and my combing and the way that I held my scissor and my razor was everything. And when I got those things locked in, sectioning, combing, holding your scissor and your razor correctly, your work will change if you have experience, for sure. And if you don't have experience yet, you're going to start the, and create the right habits. Because the thing that, we had to that I had to recognize and that some of you might need to recognize moving forward when you want to grow, parts of what you do need to change. And that's not comfortable. You know, it's uncomfortable to do that because you might have some habits that aren't the right way to do it. You know, and I had a break doing this if I was holding my scissors and moving both fingers instead of just my thumb and stuff like that. And I had to like openly be okay with that and acknowledge like there's something that I need to adjust. So what I'm doing now again is bringing all this hair up and over and I'm connecting into what we started with that layering. So you can see all through here, so now this is all gonna be blended and connected. 
all the way through. And I'm gonna bring all this hair up and over, and now what I'm doing is just going back through to create that softness that I was talking about through, through tipping, to just add a little bit more texture through her ends, because her hair, like I said, very dense. So what could happen is if I don't have even texture, and now you can start to see the shape of it is starting to kind of flow in. And remember, I haven't even created a face frame at all yet. So that's just from that layering that we did through the top. So same point here, I'm gonna take my next section, pivoting straight back. So this is what the section looks like. Okay, this is where I was, this is where I am now. I'm gonna clean that section up a bit. Straight down, I'm gonna push this away. And I'm gonna clip with my clip up this way just to get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna spin Arlen back toward me and I'm gonna comb, fine side of my comb, right from the root. And I'm gonna pull this hair up and over and we're gonna connect. Okay, so up and over, all the way over, bringing this up. There's my guide right there and now I'm gonna have a nice open, loose razor to create some softness. Same thing here, all the way up and over. And again, if any of you that have watched this video before or might watch this after today, the model that Nick does in the video has much longer hair. So I have a little bit less of length that I need to work out to, so um, it can be a little bit less challenging that way. But what's great about this haircut is that you can do this on that length or this length or anywhere in between. So to create that like difference of a feel, when somebody sees Arlen's hair, they're gonna ask her where she got it cut because it looks different than your typical haircut. And that's what you wanna do, you wanna make your mark. Nick had said to me in a class, or said to the class a while back, it's like, you know, he wanted to create a point of difference for himself, you know? There's a lot of scissor cutters out there, but there's not a lot of great razor cutters. So that was one great point of difference that he could create for himself in the market. So what's your point of difference that you can create for yourself? You know, for me it was, I had to be really committed to what I want first, Coming to this last section, I'm just gonna come straight to center back, all the way down, and this is my final section on that side. You guys see that pivot point? Right down to here. All I'm gonna do is do the exact same thing on the other side once I complete this side. And remember, we're bringing all this up and over, so think about where this layer is gonna fall. It's gonna fall pretty long through the back, so she has the security of knowing that I'm not cutting all her hair off, I'm not giving her a shag, she's not getting a mullet, nothing like that, but she's gonna have a really cool, different feel than uh, what she's had in the past. Okay, so let's comb straight from the root. So yeah, so what I was saying was, you know, your point of difference. I talked about this at Orojo Expo a couple years ago for those ambassadors that are watching or anybody that was there. You know, I talk about what's your why? That's a huge thing to know. Like, why do you get up in the morning and want to do hair every day? What drives you? And most hairdressers say, well, I love making people feel good, which I think, I would agree with, and most hairdressers would say that. But I guarantee you that you having so-and-so at 10 a.m. is not what's making you jump out of bed to make her happy. What's making you jump out of bed is a passion, and you have to figure out the definition of the passion. So for me, I've been through some tough times. My mom passed just a couple days before I actually opened my salon five years ago. So that was a big challenge for me. But I could decide to use that as an excuse in my life for why something wouldn't work or I could decide to use it as a reason for why it would. And that's what I encourage you guys to do. Change your excuses into your reasons. Because I don't believe in excuses at all. I don't think Nick does either. Preach. No excuses, results only, baby. And it's hard sometimes, you know? You're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna get stuck. But that's okay, that's a part of it too. That's a part of the story. When you watch a movie or read a book, what's the best part? The struggle, it's not like the triumph. The triumph feels good only because you've gotten to watch or read the struggle that they went through, and then the triumph comes after the struggle. The triumph can't come before the struggle, so just know that the struggle's a part of it, and then you're 10 steps ahead of the game. Okay, so now we're on the other side. So I'm gonna take that same pivot point, remember? And we're gonna come straight down on a pie-like section, so looking just like this. See that? Right there. I'm gonna section this away. So really important to stay really organized when you're working. You know, that was one thing also that I learned in boot camp. Just stay organized, you know, jot, um, map it out in your head. That's why head sheets are so big and that's why we use them so much in our training program because I want my apprentices and my hairdressers, because that's what apprentices are. They're hairdressers, they just don't have a chair yet. And it's really important to think of yourself as a hairdresser when you're in training because you need to think like one and act like one. And what you have to realize is that, you know, Building 
a curriculum, if you're an owner, is something very challenging, obviously. Um, and you have to kind of figure out how people tick to a degree, because people learn different ways. But what I learned quickly was that if I could help teach them to be organized and clean early on and right away, then they would be a better hairdresser right away. And you know, clean sectioning and clean combing doesn't take talent, it just takes discipline. You have to be focused on what you're doing and why. You can't be sloppy, and you have to be consistent. So being consistent means, okay, every single time I comb, I comb directly from the root. And I'm gonna do that a few times before I move forward. Um, if I get stuck in an area, I'm gonna analyze where I'm stuck and why, as opposed to moving on to the next. If there's nothing to cut, I'm not gonna cut that. Um, as opposed to just being in the rhythm of cutting. Um, so those are great ways to discipline yourself. What I realized was the best hair cutters and the ones that I admired, the Nicarojos, the DJ Muldoons, I could name a hundred others that we don't have time for, but they're the best combers and they're the best sectioners. And that's the truth. So now I'm going through and I'm just gonna lightly tip out, weight through the bottom. And really when we're tipping, we're tipping out the last just two to three inches of the section. And you can see that with Arlen's hair, she has amazing hair to razor because I can be slightly aggressive, not overly aggressive, I don't wanna gouge the hair. I just want to create softness and looseness. So with Arlen's hair, her hair just responds incredibly well to that. And she's going to have that really beautiful swing we're talking about. So I'm just working my way back up, because I started there at the bottom. Started at the bottom, now we hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can already see. See the softness and looseness that it's starting to create? And she has a little bit more weight that's happening through this one side. But if I shake it out and move it around, she's going to have all this really fun layering that's going to happen around her face. And again, this is before we've even gotten to the face frame. Okay, straight down here now. I'm going to take my next section all the way through. And I'm just going to twirl that away. Even if you don't use clips, just stay neat and organized. Stay really clean. All the way through. Do you have any questions there, Corinne? Uh, no. Well. Just someone uh, is asking for future uh, demos on curly hair with the razor. So... I don't know, maybe if there's a little insight you could give at least for maybe some tips. Yeah, um, I love to razor curly hair. Uh, I thought about actually doing that as my model today, um, but Arlen doesn't have curly hair, obviously. But I love to razor curly hair. The principles are all the same when you're cutting hair. You do have to be obviously conscious when you're cutting curly hair of the spring, you know, the type of, of um, curl that you're working with. But you can really create some really awesome, fun shapes when you're razoring with curls because Going from a shorter piece to a longer piece when you're razoring is, is a very different thing than when you're using scissors. Because you can just fluidly slide from long or from short to long. So when I'm using um, a razor on curls, what we don't want to do is overly texturize and overly tip out the weight at the bottom because that can shatter the curl too much and disturb the curl too much, I find. Um, and again, some of these things you only learn the hard way, to be honest with you. So. Um, you know, I've practiced on a lot of curly hair. I love cutting curly hair. It's one of actually my favorite things to do. And um, that's definitely a good tip. And you can definitely find on subscription as well, you're gonna see some cuts that have more curl to them and more curl pattern. What's cool about the razor too, it will bring out some texture in the hair. So if they have like a bit of a, a wave, you can enhance the wave with your razor. Okay, so just finishing up the whole back now, bringing all this over. Some of this will reach, some of it won't. So what's not reaching, I'm just going through and texturizing to make sure that all of my texture is, again, consistent and even. And at this point, what I want to do is bring on one of my younger stylists, Carly. So Carly, come on over here. Mm -hmm. And one quick question, Derek. Sure. How often do you like to change your razor blade? How many haircuts? Every haircut to every second haircut. Because I'm razoring so much on Arlen's hair, more than likely I'll need to change this blade for the next cut. Um, but it's usually every one to two haircuts. Great. Okay, everybody, so this is Carly. Hi, guys. Carly is um, a hairdresser at my salon as well as in the apprentice training program. She uh, started on the salon floor six to 12 months ago. She just got her second day on the salon floor just about three, a, three, month, a month ago. Right after boot camp. Right after boot camp. So, Carly, tell us about your experience at boot camp. 
boot camp was absolutely a life-changing experience. I highly, highly recommend it to any stylist, a new stylist, a master stylist, but any stylist. Um, it just puts you back in check, you know, um, with body position, sectioning, combing, um, all that good stuff makes the haircut, honestly. And um, boot camp, highly recommend it to anybody. So um, I noticed a big change in Carly, and actually David, who's going to come on camera in a moment, was uh, him and I were talking about this in the uh, car on the way down. That Carly's confidence just shot through the roof when she started. You know, it was really amazing to see the change in her, and I thought that same kind of change. And what's interesting is that when you know that that saying, "Knowledge is power," it's definitely true to a certain degree. Um, and when you have the knowledge. The fear starts to dissipate more, you know? And that fear, I think, turns into excitement. You know, and then you know that you're ready. Somebody brings you a picture, you're like, man, I'm gonna make this woman happy. She, I know exactly what to do. I know how to accomplish what she wants. This is gonna be great, as opposed to like, oh my goodness, I'm nervous, I don't know what to do. How do you do that? Oh, do I over-direct, do I not? But when you have the knowledge and the education, it all falls into place. So Carly's just been doing an absolutely amazing job. Okay, so getting back real quick, I'm sorry, Carly, let me cut you off. What um, Derek mentioned about confidence is confidence is the key in making you a great hairdresser. You know, before boot camp, I didn't really have the confidence level that I wanted, and um, I would be nervous, like, if I was afraid of doing someone's haircut, and I would, like, you know, hide, be quiet, not talk or anything like that. I was, I was scared. And, you know, you have, if you're scared, you have to tell yourself, okay, you've got this, but you know what you're doing. It's all about confidence level. We talk about fake it till you make it, you know? And um, there's a movie called Boiler Room with Ben Affleck, and there's a scene in that movie that I love. And Ben Affleck's talking about act as if. You don't have a million dollars, act as if you have a million dollars. You don't drive a Ferrari, act as if you drive a Ferrari. So if you don't have 100 clients and you don't have a six week waiting list, you have to act like you do, and not lie that you do, and tell people that you do, but you have to have that confidence and visualize that that is you, because that will become you. So same way that I, when I was sitting at Happy Mondays or sitting at a show for Rojo, I visualized myself on stage with Nick. I know that that's one of the only reasons why three years later I, I'm doing it, because I saw it and I just kind of saw the plan that I needed to follow and just work along the way and be okay with the work, you know? So I'm starting with Arlen's bang. I'm gonna do a really long kind of sexy bang that's all up in her eyes that she can push away and can be really fun that way. So I took a section, a uh, uh, triangle-like section right off of her part. And what I'm doing is I took two sections across, one, two, this way. And I'm gonna take two sections the opposite way. So I'm taking the section from the outside in, but then I'm actually cutting the bang from the inside out so that I can round the corners and make it a little bit longer through the edges. If I need to trim it afterward, I can always go back and cut a little bit more. But this way, we want like kind of a long bang. She's gonna to wanna to be able to push this around. So this way she has some more options. So coming straight down, question? Yeah. Uh, Kristen wants to know, is it best to always use the razor on wet hair? She does a lot of dry cutting. Yes, you definitely want a razor um, wet. You want to make sure that there's even hydration all the way through so that your razor can glide through the hair and not tear at the hair at all. That's really, really, really important. So we do a lot of dry cutting also. And um, when I dry cut, I use my scissors. Straight through here. So now you can see I have a really clear guide for the underneath, from the underneath for this top last section. And I'm just gonna work my way all the way across that section. So now when I move this around, she's gonna have some really pretty swing with this bang and add a really cool feel to it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do too is just one more thing here. I'm gonna take a section from the underneath. Carly, can you come over here for a moment? Just hold up for me. And now I'm going to tip through the weight of it just to make it a little bit lighter. Really just through the middle section or so. So see, light as a feather, and this is what comes out. But look at her bang. There's no holes or anything like that. Okay, take that. Now I'm just gonna do one more, and I'm actually not gonna do this very top section. I'll just do the underneath to create some swing and looseness. Straight from the root, comb straight down. Tickle the surface. So Carly, talk to me about a year ago where you felt you were in your career and where you feel you are now a year and a half to two years later. Um, before I you know, started with Derek, I, um, I was feeling completely unmotivated 
and you know, I was asking myself, like, is hair really for me? Like, I was, you know, looking into schools and you know, all that good stuff, well, all that stuff. And um, I loved hair, and I knew I wanted to do hair, but I just, I, I was stuck. And I'm sure a lot of, you know, young hairdressers out there can relate with that. And, um, you know, I heard of Derek, and I knew that Derek had a very intense training program. And continuing education and keeping yourself inspired is the key. And that's what he was all about, was being inspired and, and, and um, education. So um, that's where, you know, I joined Derek, and I, you know, did his training program. And um, I fell in love with hair again. I fell in love with doing hair again, and I have so much motivation now. And you just have to keep yourself educated and inspired, and you'll make it, absolutely. And you know, along the way too, it wasn't easy for Carly. Like our Absolutely. conversation when we first started was, listen, Carly, you're gonna need to take a couple steps back to then spring forward. And sometimes in life, that's okay. Like you gotta take a step back, reanalyze the situation, figure out what you really want, and then go get it. You know, don't don't do the paralysis to analysis thing where you're just like stuck and thinking all the time. Um, you want to make sure that you you are starting to create a plan. But sometimes you need like a chill moment to like get your thoughts together. And she knew that, okay, I gotta take this year. She's young, she's 22 years old. So two years ago she was 20. So it's like by 22 you can be a really successful hairdresser. And last week, how much did you book in services? About 1393. 1393 on the penny. Uh, we, we're really, really big with tracking our numbers, tracking our clients, our client counts, our average retail ticket, our average service ticket. That's something that every single one of my stylists tracks every single week and actually hands it in to me at the end of the week and then I upload it to um, a spreadsheet where I can analyze the entire business at a glance. So I can see what this hairdresser did or if I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Carly, I can tell you how she grew from month, uh, week three of February 2015 to same week this year. So it's a great way to um, just know where you're going. So getting back to what I'm doing on the cut, obviously you can see what I'm doing now is going back through and just recreating a bit of the face frame just to make sure that it's all intact, make sure that I'm looking good. I'm on like the last 10% of the haircut. We probably have about another 10 minutes or so. And then she'll be really ready for styling. So what I'm doing is just keeping it really, really, really loose, really soft, and then going through and now I'm actually creating that shape on her face. So before, what I was saying was I was focusing really on the internal shape, right? Now I'm really starting to see, okay, how is the shape coming together? How is it looking on her? We got the bangs intact. I love the way that that's looking. She can push this around. She can move it forward. She can wear this down however she wants. She puts on a pair of sunglasses. She'll look like a model. She'll be good to go. But what I'm doing with her angle is keeping it really right around, as you can see, chin length. So I'm not connecting the bang into the angle because that would create more of like a, a shaggy look, which I'm not going for for this cut. Okay, so same thing here. One more section through the very back or two. I'm gonna bring this up and over and make sure that everything's connected through the very front. So see right there, there's my guide, and now I'm just sliding away, keeping a nice, loose, open blade, keeping it nice and soft. So yeah, Carly's been really doing great. I have a, a team of, what I started with five years ago was myself, one hairdresser, one assistant, and a receptionist, or front desk coordinator, we like to call it. And um, five years later, I just put my ninth or eighth or ninth stylist on the floor. So mm -hmm. I think that's a testament to just training, you know, building a program within your salon. I think us as uh, salon owners, it's our responsibility to maintain the, to either maintain, A, maintain it, or, well, A, create it, which is the culture, and B, maintain it. Because I believe a culture is like a living, breathing thing. And it's something that needs constant moder monitoring and adjusting and tweaking and it's a baby that needs love, you know what I mean? So um, my culture has been about, like Carly said, passion, focus, hard work. We have a lot of fun when we, when we work, but we work really hard. Um, and I just want to grow. I, I want to make sure that myself and everyone around me is continuing to grow. And I recognize as an owner that it's my responsibility to lead that from the front. And so what does that mean? That means I have to be tracking my numbers. I have to be setting goals for myself and my career. I have to be doing every single thing and then some that I even think about requiring for my team. And that's the mistake that I think some leaders make. First of all, if you're an owner, you're a leader whether you think you are or not because they're looking at you to lead. So you opening up a door and hiring employees or having people rent from you or whatever your structure is, that's created a leadership role for yourself. 
And if you're not good at it, that's okay. Just get good at it, you know, learn. It's not like I, I, I don't have this innate sense of leadership. I learned, you know, and I just trained and read books and took classes. And I'm a big John Maxwell fan for anybody that knows me. I read a lot of his books and listen to a lot of his stuff. And he's a great leadership teacher. Hey, Derek, we've got a question sure. from Sarah. Um, back when you were working on the bang, she's wondering, are you using just the tip of the razor and light pressure to take out the weight? Uh, yes, when I'm tipping, I'm using just the tip and taking out weight. Right now, I'm using more the edge and the flat of the blade to a degree, so I'm not right on the edge, but I'm not right on the flat. I'm somewhere in between, which is what's so great. You have 180 degrees to rotate this whole blade and anywhere in between. So what I was just doing here on this section, you can see, I needed to take some length off to help balance out her face frame, because remember, we haven't created that in this haircut yet. What I'm doing next is I'm going to lift this piece up and look at that weight here. See that weight, how dark that looks here, but how light this piece looks? Now I'm going to take just the tip of my blade and just tickle the surface of the hair with tight tension. You can see my fingers are almost crossed one on top of the other. That's something that I learned um, at Arojo specifically. Carmel, if you're watching, she was like one of the major, I don't even know if she knows this, but she was a major impact for me in boot camp. Um, not to take away from anyone else, but Carmel and Lee and John and uh, uh, Rhea, everybody was amazing. But Carmel, I just kind of hit a chord with and I just remember her coming over to me a few times during Razor and I was maybe rounding a corner or I was, you know, not elevating enough. And she just kind of gave me the tips that stuck in my head and that have made a big difference for me. So, you know, the educators at Arojo are world class. It's really incredible. If you come to New York City and take a class, um, you'll never, ever, ever be disappointed with the quality of education that you're going to receive. And, um, you know, what's really cool is everybody speaks the same language. Obviously, everyone's cut from the same cloth as an Arojo educator, but everybody also is able to give their own little twist and feel on it. Um, Corinne came out to my salon about, I think, a year or so ago, maybe two, almost two years ago, maybe. Um, and we did classic scissor cutting. You know, so in my apprentice program, it's all classic scissors for a long time before you even think about touching a razor because you have to understand scissor cutting first. Then you can become a really, really, really great razor cutter. Um, and you know, my whole thing is when I start something, I want to finish. And I don't want to have, I don't want to go halfway. I want to work really hard for it. And I might not be the most talented hairdresser, I don't believe that I am, but I'm definitely one of the hardest working and nobody can um, take that work ethic away from you if you're committed to it. So look at the um, looseness and swing. She's starting to really get around the face. It's starting to really come together now. Probably have about five more minutes or so. What I'll do after this just really quickly is just check through the back and see the connection from those shorter pieces to the length and make sure that there's not too deep of a disconnection there and make sure that the density of the back is very similar to the front. So now what I'm doing is because most of this is already layered and some of it doesn't reach all the way to the front face frame, I'm going to just texturize. Elevation is important here because I want to keep it soft. But now back to that first question or that last question, now I'm going through and I'm using just the tip of the blade, lightly, lightly, lightly very light pressure. Obviously, if you press too hard, you're going to gouge it. You know, you might create a hole or you might take a chunk of hair out. That's not what I want to do. I want to take just a bit of hair out just to create softness and make sure that, again, it might sound like a broken record, but it's so important. The consistency in your texture is everything for your razor cut. So, David, come on over. So, everybody, this is David. David's one of the newest members um, on my team. He started with me about three to five months ago. Yeah. He's been doing great. Natural haircut right here, really great kid. Hard worker, helpful. Every single client has nothing but incredible things to say about him. He has the right attitude. He comes to work ready to go every single day, on time. Comfy training, always has a model, ready to go. He's been a really great example um, of what I believe success looks like at his level. So David, talk to me a little bit about, talk to Facebook a little bit about what it's been like um, working at the salon, what the training program is a little bit like, and what attracted you to work at the salon. Well, I graduated hair school right over the summer, and I was looking around, just thinking of places to apply to, and I heard about his education program, which nowhere in my area really does any, anything like that. So it kind of just attracted me there, and from there, 
the training program has been amazing. We every three weeks we have to have a model. Every we do work on mannequins, which we're switching up. We're about to do two models every week. And yeah, it's just been incredible. I've learned so much in the short amount of time I've been there. Met so many new people. It's just been amazing. Yeah, David's been uh, yeah, a great example of what it looks like to work really hard. And I think he's going to be an incredible, incredible hairdresser and really busy. Thank you. Um, so what he was mentioning was like what we were doing was we were doing this hybrid of working with mannequins and working with models and mannequins and models. And Nick and I were just talking about this and he really challenged me. He's like, you know, they're not learning as much on a mannequin. They're just not. And um, what I'm going to do for 2017, we're, we're revamping the whole training. So what I did was I went back through everything and I, I phased things out or create, actually like broke it into phases so that there could be more clarity. Um, if anybody knows or watched one of the first Facebook Lives that they did out of the Soho location, it was on training programs. So I watched that video a bunch of times, took some notes on things that maybe elements I was missing, noted things that I was doing well within the program, and one of the main things that I recognized was that I need to train more, as far as more often, um, and they need to do more model work. So starting 2017, we're actually going to be training Tuesdays and Wednesdays for three hours each day, and it's going to be all model work. If they need to work on a mannequin, they can work on that on their own time for practice, of course, to practice maybe a technique or something like that. But when we're working in training, it's going to be all models. Those models are going to pay 25 bucks a haircut, whether you're male or female. And it's going to be a great way to, um, for them to start building a little bit of a clientele, for them to start building a reputation for themselves, and then for them to really learn the interaction of what it's like to be a real-time hairdresser. Because we all know a doll head can't get mad at you or move or cry or anything like that. So um, it's going to be, I think, a really great move. So you can see, see how much weight we kept all the way through the whole back? A ton of weight through the back, which adds this really cool swing. Let's take a look at these layers through here. Derek, um, yeah. can you give salon owners any tips about um, motivating assistants that don't want to grow and learn? Great question. So how do you motivate an unmotivated person? That's like asking how do you push a wet noodle? How do you do it? <laughs> Very hard to do, right? So what I always say is I hire for attitude and I train for skill. I don't care what your resume honestly is, to be perfectly honest. You could have a great one and it would be better. You can have experience, that's good. But the reality is, I care about your attitude. So it's very hard to, un to motivate someone unmotivated. But at the same time, some people just get discouraged. That's different than being an unmotivated person all the way around. So I think you have to identify what's happening in that personality or with that person. Are they someone that you really, that you see potential in? That you know can build, you know, um, a great clientele and become a really successful hairdresser within your brand? Are they someone that is willing to stay committed to education? And do you have standards and requirements that you've sat down with this person and asked them to live up to? So if maybe there's a, an issue happening, I might have to have a conversation with someone and, and rediscuss you know, our arrangement and say, okay, so these are the things that I'm gonna be looking for over the next three weeks. Can you agree to doing this, 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 and that? And this is what I expect and this is what I'm also gonna give you in return. Um, so for me, what I always say at the beginning of an interview or within the interview or when I'm hiring someone, it's like, listen, I will give you 110%, no matter what. Everything that I have, you will get. But I need you to meet me with your 110%. I can't give you 110 and you give me 50. Because that means that I want it for you more than you want it for yourself. So that desire to want it has to come from with you. But I also do recognize that as an owner, I need to provide opportunities for them to be inspired, to get motivated. Them coming today is a really fun thing for us to be able to do together and to empower them. And same thing for other members on my own team back in, uh, in NIAC. So um, I know it's a long answer to the question, but it's a, it's a complicated question because it depends on the person. But I'm, I'm really into just giving people motivation, giving people second chances, but I also think that you gotta work. There's no shortcuts around that. Okay, so just finishing up now, I just went through that whole side. I literally am on the last 3% of the haircut. Just going through to make sure that all of our layering is textured and even and soft. You can see that a lot of this layering falls a good amount longer through the back, so she'll have all that weight through the back, but she's gonna have all this interest and fun through the very front. That was one thing that I remember asking myself in the beginning, like how, how do you find the right people? 
How do you build the right team? How do you attract the, the people that really, really want to work? How do you find that perfect assistant? But you know what you have to do? You have to grow them. You have to home grow them. That's what I realized. I, and you know what I had to do first? I had to become that person. I had to act and walk and talk just like the person I want to hire. Um, and I had to show them through example that this is what I'm looking for. And then people like David started ringing my doorbell. You know, it wasn't like I went on this hunt and had this ad out. David literally walked into the salon one day and filled out an application. And last week we had two people fill out an application. And yesterday there was a girl that actually just graduated uh, the past couple months from Rojo Cosmetology School, and she filled out an application. So I have you know four or five people that I'm looking at now to be able to bring into the training program for next year. So just looking at a finishing touch here, I'm going to close my razor for a moment. So really important to look at the mirror and see how your model's looking. This is looking really good. See how you have that like, nice little soft bang. It looks really pretty. And she has a lot of this swing, a lot of this movement. So you can push the bang around. You can move this back and forth. And you can see that through here, she has all this really fun layering that kind of falls and cascades over the front. You can see a lot of the fun happening there and softness. And same thing through here. What do you think? Like it? So what I'm going to do is just rough dry it a bit and we're going to start to talk about some product that we're going to use. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use some defrizz serum. Absolutely love this product. This um, adds just a lightweight, it's, a, it's a basically a smoother. It's going to tame the static, smooth the frizz. So I'm going to use a nickel sized amount. I'm going to mainly run that through her mid shafts and ends. a bit underneath and then I'll put the excess through the top. What's great about this is you can already see like she could literally just walk out the door after air drying or after applying some product and she could just have a really really cool modern trendy look. Okay now what I'm going to use is a little bit of set and style spray. This is a, I love this product. I use this all the time. Very lightweight hold, a little bit of lift. Her hair has a lot of body to it, so I'm not really worried about creating too much body, but I do want to create some movement in her hair. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to blow dry the bang for you guys on camera so you can just see kind of the finished result with her front, and then we'll wrap it up for today. So happy to, again, be able to spend this time with you guys. Honored that you're on and watching. This is one of my favorite brushes. This is the Erojo Flat Paddle. I'm gonna just blow dry her bang with this, just to smooth that out. And that's maybe, this is when I'd be talking to her about everything about the product. She would be holding the product herself, checking them out. I'd be explaining exactly how to use it, how much she's gonna use, how to apply it, the same way that I'm explaining it to you. I'd be having this as a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. And notice, the minute that you hand someone a product, they're gonna turn it around and start reading it. And they're gonna see the directions, and they're gonna have like a relationship with the product, as corny as that can sound, it's true. And then what I'll do is take this and then give you the next one. This is what I did, and I liberally spritzed this around about 10 to 12 sprays all the way through the head and just kind of rough, rough it through and just kind of use your hands to push it through. And what you can do is you can either air dry your hair totally um, or you can just blow dry the bang like I'm going to do and then let the rest air dry. So we're just going to blow dry the bang real quick. Push this out of the way. So I'm going to take my flat paddle and just come right over the top. start to get a feel for how it's going to look with the person, right? Because there's a body under that cape, too. Okay, now let's look at this here. Yeah, look, so she's getting some really cool swing. It's already starting to dry off on its own. I'm going to let the rest air dry. And again, we want to thank you guys so much for being a part of it. I hope you like my haircut. Check it out on a Rosa subscription. It's, again, the Shatterbox haircut. If you have any questions for me personally, you can friend request me. It's D-E-R-E-K. And my last name is M-A-L-D-O-N-A-D-O. -A -A 
or you can find me on Instagram at underscore Derek, D-E-R-E-K underscore Anthony. So again, great time hanging with you guys and come check us out again for the next Brooklyn Live.